okay uh, good morning so yes, last class we were discussing about real time communication in a lan environment and uh, we could not complete our discussion last time so let's uh, continue from where we left last time So last time we were discussing about uh, bounded access protocols for LAN and uh, two popular examples of bounded access protocols are IEEE 802.4 and the uh, RETHER. First let us uh, discuss about the IEEE 802.4 protocol. Uh, some important points in the working of the protocol are that uh, it uh, is a protocol that is used either in a token ring or a token bus network and we are saying that the token ring token bus network have a special advantage in the manufacturing situations have been in use in manufacturing automation for quite some time. The 802.4 is also popularly known as the timed token protocol. Here a node is allowed to tra transmit only when it is in possession of the token. So, the token visits every node and only when a node holds the token it can transmit and uh, once it starts transmitting then the duration for which it can transmit is bounded. So, that is fixed a priori and it is not necessary that every node transmits for similar amounts of time. Depending on the traffic at a node, the time that a node is uh, permitted to transmit can vary, but still once it has been assigned, we know that which node is going to transmit maximum for what duration and based on that we can do some computation to find out what would be the maximum delay before which a node will be allowed to transmit. So, we can compute the maximum priority inversion time and which is very important in real time applications because based on that we can design a system. If we need the priority inversions in message transmissions to be less than some amount, we can design the network and then based on that guarantees can be given, but we had seen that in some networks it is uh, very difficult to guarantee the bound on the priority inversion. Sir, yes. Sir, is it a security actually maintained in the token ring? Yeah, 802.5 we had already discussed, so that was a priority based protocol this is a bounded access protocol. So, here we the turn the take in transmitting is pre decided transmit one after other whereas, in a IEEE 802.5 which is a priority based protocol the different uh, nodes bid or they there is arbitration there is a reservation and a mode bit all those we had discussed in the last class that uh, each time a node gets a message it uh, tries to capture the token by writing the priority of the message on the reservation field and then the token is set into the free mode. So, that is about 802.5, but here it is not a priority based protocol, it is not a global priority put protocol, but it is a bounded access protocol. So, here one important parameter is the target token rotation time or TTRT. The TTRT is the expected time between two consecutive visits of a token to a node. So, it is not the exact time that two of two visits of a token to a node, it is the expected time. It can be less than this or more than this we will see the situations in which the actual token rotation time 
can be less than TTRT, it can even be more than TTRT, but TTRT is the expected time between two consecutive visits of a token to a node. And uh, this happens to be the most important design parameter. We will based on some situations that nodes have certain types of messages, we will try to design a IEEE 2.4 network, where we would first try to fix the TTRT, most important design parameter and uh, this is initialized during the network setup. Here two categories of messages are handled, real time messages are assumed to be periodic. So, if we have some aperiodic or sporadic messages which are important, we will have to convert them into real time into periodic messages, where there will be a slot reserved for them each time and they might or might not arrive that time. So, all the real time messages are assumed to be periodic and uh, these are referred to as the synchronous messages. So, the synchronous messages are the real time messages which are periodic. And uh, when synchronous messages do not exist with a node for some token digit, they can start transmitting the other messages that they might have, the non real time messages, which are called as the asynchronous messages. So, they transmit the synchronous messages first, and if there is time, they would transmit the asynchronous messages, and we will see that. Sometimes the token might arrive at a node early, less than the TTRT time, and then that is the opportunity to transmit the asynchronous messages. So, the TTRT is the time it takes for the token, the expected time of the token to visit each node, and the TTRT is uh, the total bandwidth available. I mean, we can say that. Um, in one turn, all the nodes together transmit for TTRT, right. So, the TTRT duration, all the turns, all the nodes take turn and uh, when each one transmit once for the turn to complete, that is equal to TTRT, right. Now, the TTRT is distributed between the different nodes. So, some node might get TTRT by 10, some node TTRT by 5. So, that is the duration for which they will be allowed to transmit. Now, when a node receives a token, it starts to transmit, transmit its real time messages and after transmitting these messages, if there is any time left out, they can transmit the asynchronous messages and uh, this we will see is that uh, usually possible if the token arrives early at a node. A token might arrive early at a node because some node has released the, no the token early, some nodes node or nodes have released it early because they had possibly expected visit, let it be HI. So, for node NI, each time the token visits, it can transmit for a maximum of HI and let theta be the propagation time on the network. So, then we have this expression, the target token rotation time, the TTRT is equal to the propagation time plus the times for which all the nodes transmit. It looks very simple here. The time for which all the nodes transmit plus the token rotation, sorry, the propagation time is equal to the target token rotation time, this is the expected value of the token to arrive 
two consecutive visits to a node. Is this uh, appearing ok? Sim very simple, TTRT is theta plus all the synchronous bandwidths for every node. Sorry? Sn is all the nodes, the node set let us say, the set of all nodes that are there in the network. Okay. So, for all the nodes that are there in the network, we share this bandwidth, the sum of their synchronous bandwidths plus the propagation time will be equal to TTRT. Now, once we have allocated the synchronous bandwidth to the nodes, we have to be aware that there can be asynchronous overruns. Here the token arrives early and the node starts to transmit non-real time messages. So, that we will call as asynchronous overrun, where the token arrives early or maybe the node does not have itself real time messages to transmit for its entire allocated duration and it starts to transmit non real time messages that we will call as the asynchronous overrun. Now, given this situation, the worst case time between two successive visits of a token is 2 into TTRT. We had said that the expected time of a token visit, two successive visit of a token is TTRT, but due to asynchronous overrun, it can be 2 into TTRT. Why is that? Because in the worst case, let us assume that none of the nodes had anything to transmit, either the synchronous, neither the asynchronous messages in the worst case. So, then it arrives at a node almost 1 TTRT time early, right? TTRT minus time minus theta time early, right? Almost TTRT time early it can arrive at a node. And now, suppose in the next iteration, every node had synchronous and asynchronous messages to transmit and they keep on transmitting. So, then the time for the token to visit a node will be 2 into TTRT. Does that appear all right? Okay, we will we'll just check that again with a diagram, but uh, for the time being, let us just uh, assume that, that the worst case time between two successive visits of a token is 2 into TTRT. Now, again, this is uh, due to the asynchronous overrun, because the synchronous messages, they, uh, their size is fixed. So, the asynchronous messages when need to transmit them when the token arrives early that uh, leads to this 2 into TTRT. But uh, when in a network we have only the synchronous messages, then of course, the worst case time between consecutive token arrivals will be TTRT. Right. assume that there are no asynchronous messages, only the real time messages, then it will be TTRT. So, it becomes 2 into TTRT when we have asynchronous messages in the node, in for the nodes to transmit. Do you agree with that? Yes or no? Yes, simple thing. Okay. So, this is just an example, suppose uh, the token once it left this node, none of these had any synchronous or asynchronous messages to transmit. So, within theta it will arrive back here, right? it has arrived early almost TTRT, theta is very small. So, it has arrived almost TTRT time earlier. Now, let us say this node and this node, each one had both synchronous and asynchronous messages to transmit, lot of asynchronous messages to transmit. So, since the token has arrived early, they will start transmitting their asynchronous messages and then also their synchronous messages. So, let us say the synchronous messages are transmitted for TTRT and asynchronous messages for another TTRT. 
So, for the next visit of the token to this node, it will be 2 into TTRT. Okay. Now, let us look at how do we design given a situation where nodes have certain messages, how do we design the network. Now, let us assign let us assume that uh, each we know what are the synchronous messages the real time messages with every node. Now, let us assume that of all the nodes, the node n i has the message with the shortest deadline, the other nodes have messages where the deadlines are more lax, the larger than delta, delta is the shortest deadline and node n i happens to have that message. Now, we need to set the TTRT because that is the first parameter we need to fix. So, the TTRT should be set to be either delta by 2 or lower than that. Why is that? Yeah, because uh, a node the token can arrive at a node in the worst case 2 into TTRT time later. So, it can arrive delta time later and then it starts transmitting. if we keep TTRT greater than delta by 2, then by the time in the worst case the node arrives, the deadline would have already expired. Now, what if the TTRT is set too small, let us say delta by 10, what, what do you think? Will it be a good idea to set it to be delta by 10 or delta by 100? No, it will transmit in the next visit. Okay, so you are saying that a real time so message. Like a okay, a real time message. It may not be able to transmit in that duration, but that's not the major problem because again it will visit after delta by ten. Right. So the main problem is that there will be too much of overhead here. So each time theta is lost out, isn't it? Propagation. So the node is rotating, and uh, sorry, the token is rotating and uh, each time only very few transmission is taking place and uh, more time is wasted in just propagating across the network. So, the token is propagating more 10 times and the transmission is only few, right. So, the overhead would become too much and also as he was pointing out that uh, in each visit it may not be possible to transmit all the real time messages that it might have. So, it is possible that if the entire synchronous message had the bandwidth uh, which is larger than delta by 10, then there will be problem is not it. So, having known that, that uh, we have to fix the TTRT to be equal to delta by 2 if possible or slightly lower than delta by 2, never higher than delta by 2, but either equal to or slightly lower than delta by 2. Now, the next thing we will have to decide is uh, for how much time each node can transmit. So, that is given by this formula here, see here the total time that a node can transmit in one TTRT that is during one visit of the token is TTRT minus theta, this is the total time for which all the nodes can transmit, right. And uh, now let us assume that uh, each node has messages that keep on arriving T i, T i is the period of the messages and uh, C i is the size of the messages. And then C i by T i is the utilization due to the message i. So, C i is the messages for a node i. 
size of the messages for node i and T i is the period. Then C i is C i by T i is the total utilization of the channel due to the node i, right. So, divided by the total utilization for all the nodes. So, we have proportionally distributed the available bandwidth among the nodes depending on what is the utilization they are going to achieve. Is that okay? So, the total bandwidth that is T T R T minus theta for which the transmissions can occur during one visit of the token is proportionally distributed among the nodes depending on how much traffic they have. Now, let us try to do a small example. Let us try to consider a network which is designed using IEEE 802.4 protocol, it has three nodes. Node N 1 needs to transmit 1 MB data every 300 milliseconds, N 2 needs to transmit 1.2 MB data every 500 milliseconds and N 3 needs to transmit 2 MB data every 200 millisecond. So, the first thing is we will have to select a suitable T T R T. T T R T would be very simple to select. What do you think will be T T R T? Yes? What would be T T R T? Okay. So, what will be in this case for this example? Look at the example. So, these are the situation given, three nodes are there n 2, n 1, n 2, n 3 and uh, the size of messages and over what duration they need to transmit is given. No, wh what is the value? Tell me here. 100, yes. So, we should set T T R T to be equal to 100. Do everybody agree with that? Exactly. So, delta by 2. Delta have see the node N 3 has messages with the shortest deadline, right. So, we need to set delta is equal to 200 by 2, sorry, T T R T is equal to 200 by 2, ignoring the propagation time, okay. Now, <coughs> What about the synchronous bandwidth? How do we allocate the synchronous bandwidth? Yes, how, how can we allocate the synchronous bandwidth? Just tell how do we allocate? We have to find the utilization due to each node, the channel utilization due to each node or how much traffic is there in each node per unit time. And then based on that we need to propagate, uh, we proportionally distribute the TTRT between all the nodes, right. So, let us do that. So, TTRT is 200 by 2 is 100 millisecond, this we, you have already said. Now, the utilization due to node 1 will be 1 into 8 by 300 MB per millisecond, right. For node 2, it will be 1.2 into 8 by 500 MB per millisecond, because it was byte, I think 8 is multiplied here. So, it, it converted to bits, sorry. Seconds, is it? Okay. So, then it will be bits per second. And uh, C 3 by T 3 will be 2 into 8 by 200 bits per millisecond or second whatever was given there. Now, based on that we can find the total utilization due to all the nodes which is the sum of all this and then we can proportionally distribute among the nodes. So, if the summation of all these three items becomes let us say sigma, 
then TTRT 100 millisecond into 1.8 by 300 divided by sigma will be H 1 which is 21.18 millisecond. So, the node N 1 can transmit up to 21.18 millisecond H 2 that is uh, the synchronous bandwidth of node 2 will be 15.25 millisecond and uh, N 3 the synchronous bandwidth for N 3 will be 63.56 millisecond. Does it appear ok? Anybody has any difficulty? Ok, all right. So, yeah that is what is given in the problem that the propagation time can be ignored. Yeah. So, the propagation the network is small. So, theta we have ignored. If theta is given then we will have to consider that. So, I hope if we give let us say theta is equal to 1 millisecond, the propagation time is 1 millisecond, you can easily do it also just a small modification of this right. And this is another example, okay, this is an exercise for you to try. So, again 3 nodes n 1, n 2, n 3 and the transmission requirements of nodes is as follows node n 1 is 100 kilobytes every 100 millisecond, node 2 200 kilobytes every 150 millisecond and node n 3 500 kilobytes every 100 millisecond. Please take that down, I will describe the other part of the problem. So, this the uh, situation that we are discussing that 802.4 is used and there are only 3 nodes in the network and the transmission requirements N 1 needs to transmit 100 kilobyte every 100 millisecond, node 2 200 kilobytes every 150 millisecond and node N 3 500 kilobytes every 100 millisecond. The first thing is we will have to choose the TTRT. How much will be the TTRT? 50, because 100 is the lowest uh, deadline we can consider. So, the 100 by 2 is 50. Now, what is the maximum time for which the real time messages may suffer inversion? Yes, what, what do you think? Okay. So, it is simple the maximum time for which the messages suffer inversion is uh, twice the TTRT that we had already discussed. So, TTRT is set to be 50. So, the maximum inversion that is a higher priority message exists, but lower priority messages are getting transmitted that is limited to 100 2 into TTRT determine the synchronous bandwidth of the nodes. So, this uh, we will have to proportionally distribute the TTRT among the 3 nodes based on the, the utilization of the channel for each of these nodes. Hopefully, you can do that is not it simple thing. Now, let us look at another exercise. So, here it is given to be a 10 Mbps token ring network. The walk time is 1 millisecond, walk time is basically the token propagation time. Frame size is 512 bytes. Ten kbps data needs to be transmitted every hundred millisecond. Determine the fraction of wasted bandwidth in the 802.5 protocol. So this is a priority based protocol. So here the data is that 
the total bandwidth of the network is given, the propagation time is given, the frame size is given. So, this is the size of the payload on a token and uh, then the amount of data that needs to be transmitted every 100 millisecond is given and the fraction of the wasted bandwidth have to be identified. What is the fraction of the wasted bandwidth? Yes, how do we determine the fraction of the wasted bandwidth? Okay, how, how does waste occurs? Let us assume, let us first discuss how does waste occurs? Yes, can anybody tell how in 802.5 protocol bandwidth wastage occurs? Yes. So, like the time it takes to travel from one node to other. Okay. So, so basically what he says is that the time it takes to transmit a packet, it is less than the propagation time, right. So, here a node does not transmit until it sees the header back only then it knows that either reservation is made or not made. So, until it receives the header back a node does not start the next frame. So, let us say the transmission completed very fast because the bandwidth is 10 Mbps and only 512 bytes need to be transmitted, right, but it takes 1 millisecond for the token to the header to reach at the node back. So, if this time is more than the transmission time, right, then the node has already finished its transmission of the frame, but it cannot transmit the next one waiting for the header of the token to arrive, right. So, that is the wasted bandwidth. So, the wasted bandwidth can be found out by determining theta minus the time it takes to transmit one frame. So, how much time it will take to transmit one frame? This will be 512 divided by 10 to the power 6, right, 10 to the power 6. So, 1 millisecond minus 512 by 10 to the power 6 will be the time that will be wasted and that waste occurs every frame transmission, right. So, from that we can find out the fraction of wasted bandwidth in the protocol. Does that appear ok? I mean uh, would you like to do and uh, get the answer or you think that the computations are already can do it ok. So, if you understood that, that we need to compute the time per the frame to be one frame to be transmitted and the check if it is more than 1 millisecond then find out what portion of the time the node will be sitting idle without able to transmit the next frame. So, that is the wastage and that occurs during every frame transmission time. So, that is the fraction of the wasted bandwidth, but what about this part of the question? what is the maximum duration of priority inversion in 802.5 and 802.4? How do we do this? Yeah, here it will be 2 times the uh, uh, TTRT, but what about this one? Yeah. 800 for 802.5, it will be twice of either theta or f whichever is larger. So, depending on the type of the network and our choice of TTRT, we can find out which has the highest or more priority inversion possibility of higher priority inversion. Now, what about uh, this quiz? Please try this one. 
So, please identify whether the following statement is true or false. Now, we know the countdown protocol, right? We had discussed that. Do you remember the countdown protocol? So, here there is arbitration period followed by transmission and the arbitration occurs by the nodes start transmitting their ID and when a node finds that it is uh, there is a higher priority or a uh, ID uh, a node with a higher ID then it just drops out. And then we had discussed the example that we had taken that time that uh, the priority arbitration start with transmitting the MSB that we had discussed. The example that if you remember the node starts transmitting from its MSB most significant digit, most significant bit and uh, then they just check out which has higher. Now, the question is that will it work if they start from the LSB start transmitting from the LSB side and as long as the nodes all nodes agree the convention that each node is going to transmit from the LSB side will it work. Yes, sir. So, if we just consider that the lower number indicates a higher priority. No, what no, about no, no, no. let us say he says yes let us check others would you Why, why will it work on number of stations are limited? Higher stations will be waiting for infrared. So, each one transmitting the LSV, will it work? What about others? Anyone else can answer? He said yes, right? Anybody is saying no? Okay, it will not work actually since no one is coming forward just uh, look at this. Suppose a node has uh, ID 00100 and another one has 000 let us say 011. So, this is much lower than this one, right. This, this node is lower than this node, but uh, they cannot reason that out and we can you can just construct an example where uh, let us say if you look at another example like let us say 1101 1, 1, and another one has let us say 0, 0, 1 1. How do you reason about that? So, it becomes very difficult to reason the ID of a node by just looking from the LSB side. Okay. So, you can always construct an example where it is very difficult to identify which one has hi higher or lower ID by just uh, starting to examine from the LSB side it do not work. So, that is why we had given the example of MSB. Okay. Now, let us look at another protocol the Arithar. The Arithar stands for real time Ethernet. So, from the name we can guess that it is based on the Ethernet. Actually, this protocol switches between Ethernet and the token ring protocol. The Ethernet have some advantages for non real time messages Ethernet is good, leads to higher channel utilization for non real time messages for uh, a token ring protocol does not really work well when only for non real time messages. Do you agree with that? 
yes do you agree with that that the ethernet is more efficient or it is a better protocol for non real time messages and the token ring protocol is not as good to transmit non real time messages. And then I get the hint that the ethernet can lead to higher channel utilization compared to the token ring. So, when will that occur? Let us give an example. not very hard see you, the fraction of bandwidth is allocated to different nodes and let us as, let us assume that a node does not have any data to transmit but it will be you no know, th there will be a wastage of the bandwidth so <coughs> this protocol switches between the ethernet and token ring protocols for uh, depending on whether the transmission is for non real time messages or for real time messages. And the transmission occurs in ethernet mode in CSMACD protocol and in for the real time messages in the R ether. And it uh, switches to R ether mode when there are real time messages to transmit and once the real time messages are over it switches back to the ethernet the csmacd so when a real time request comes from a, for a node if it is already in the r ether mode no problem its request is registered and it transmits its message but if it is not in the R ether mode, it is in the ethernet mode, then it broadcasts a switch to R ether node, R ether mode. Switch to R ether mode is broadcast and all nodes that receive the message switch to R ether mode waiting for a token and uh, they also acknowledge the sender saying that they have switched their mode they are not going to transmit any more non real time messages only when they receive the token they will tr start transmitting so that is the mode that switch to and uh, then the node which was transmitting some message it just completes that right it was send, trying to send a packet or something or a frame it just completes transmitting that frame and then after transmitting the frame it sends an acknowledgement and changes to the R ether mode and after the node initiating the R ether mode gets acknowledgement from all the nodes it creates a token and uh, starts transmitting and uh, then circulates it. And finally, when there are no real time messages, it does not have any more real time messages, it uh, sends a broadcast for starting the ethernet mode. But one complication is that it is possible that two nodes get real time message at the same time and both of them they start want to start the real time mode. Then there will be a problem is not it. So, let us see how the protocol handles this. When more than one node try to initiate the switch mode, the switch message switch to R ether mode, then <coughs> there will be a problem if both of them generate the token. right? So, here the way it is resolved is that an initiator A will send an acknowledgement to another initiator B. So, B had also transmitted switch to R ether. It will send to B only if B's node ID is smaller than A. So, B is higher priority to A, then only it will acknowledge. Otherwise, it will withhold the acknowledgement and then B will understand that uh, it cannot really generate a token. And then we have to look at another possibility is that what if 
there is a loss of acknowledgement. Some node sent an act, but lost. Then the initiator would time out, and then it would retry. Again, send a switch to arithmetic mode message. And once in the arithmetic mode, uses a time token scheme. and uh, at any time only one real time request is allowed per node. So, that is the time for which it can transmit. It can say that I have 2, 3 messages with different characteristics. It it has to convert that into one request. And once uh, for every request it needs to specify the total bandwidth that it would need to transmit, the total data that needs to transmit and uh, based on this the TTRT time is framed, the TTRT is set and uh, one thing that we need to remember is that all nodes need not have real time messages at any time. Some nodes have real time messages and it is possible that some nodes at that instant have only non real time messages. So, then how will it work? So, we have to also consider this case. Now, the real time messages, uh, the nodes having real time messages, the reserve bandwidth and also there is some time for the non real time set. This will be decided based on how much data the, the real time messages would take over the TTRT. So, the what is their deadline and how much data they need to transmit before the deadline based on that the TTRT is set and how much uh, the amount of time that is left out will be given to the non real time set to transmit. So, while the token is circulating it actually visits the nodes in the RTS the real time set while circulating the node visits the real time set and they transmit. A node having the real time or the synchronous data they transmit and then pass to the next node which transmits. And after completing the transmission of all the real time messages, if there is still time left out, then the token is passed to the non real time set, the nodes in the non real time set and they start transmitting. if uh, MTHTI is the token holding time for the node N i and uh, so th this is a value let us uh, define as a variable MTHTI is the mean token holding time for node N i and uh, the token itself is tagged with a variable here time to deadline field. Basically it says how much of the TTRT is left out the time to deadline in the token means it is a indicator of how much time is left out before the TTRT would expire. So, if you think of it in terms of MTHTI and TTRT we can express the time that the non real time set can transmit is TTRT minus MTHTI the summation of all this all the nodes having real time messages to transmit the summation of the token holding time for them TTRT minus this will be the time that the other nodes can transmit. So, that we have seen that the time to deadline parameter indicates how much time for the token holding for the token to uh, uh, TTRT is uh, to expire and uh, based on the time to deadline the non real time set nodes in the non real time set they know how much they can transmit. So, once t the time to deadline becomes 0 they will have to release the token and each time they transmit the time to deadline decreases and once one node completes transmitting its asynchronous messages transmits it passes the token to the next node in the NRTS 
and this happens until the time to deadline parameter becomes 0 and at that moment it has to go back to the real time set. And uh, of also uh, to prevent a node from monopolizing while transmitting the non real time messages, somehow it has to be remembered that uh, which token had last got the chance to transmit the non real time messages, because it might again come to that node and then that node will monopolize, it will have lot of data to transmit all other nodes will be starved. So, which node was last got chance to transmit the non real time messages is remembered and uh, next time the real time messages are over it comes back to the next node which had transmitted the asynchronous messages. And then one final issue that we need to consider is the admission control procedure. So, what if a node uh, gets a real time message, will it just start uh, transmitting? In that case, if there are too many messages, then the messages will start missing deadline in an unpredictable manner. The admission control procedure is as follows, each node locally determines that whether it will be possible to honor its request, but how will it do that? Very simple, if it knows the MTHT of the different nodes and the TTRT. So, if the, so this is the time for which the, it is reserved for the asynchronous messages, okay. they should not just starve and this is the one which has already been allocated. Now, if the new request that has come in, if all this sum up to less than TTRT, then this request can be honored, that is the admission control. If this happens to be larger than the sum happens to be larger than TTRT, then some messages will start missing their deadline, is not it. So, finding the admission control or finding whether a new request can be honored is also easy to find out, is not it. I hope all of you can be able to do that, is given a situation, what is the mean token holding time for each node and the new nodes requirement and the reservation for sending the non real time messages based on that can reason out whether uh, a new message request can be honored. And finally, when a node completes transmitting its real time messages, there are no further messages with it, it will send a request to remove it from the real time set, so that the token will not visit it during the transmission of the uh, synchronous messages. So, this is a, also a popular protocol, we would like to have done some problems on this also, but uh, considering the time that we have, we will not uh, do that just leave it to you as an exercise and uh, we will stop this discussion now, we will continue for the next lecture next time. Okay, thank you.